welcome to or welcome back to my channel so little time and my name is Karen so I hope you're all doing really well and thank you very much for joining me today today I'm here to share with you my latest make for the Felicity Fabrics blog and they've kindly gifted me some fabric to make this with and this month it was for yet another challenge so earlier on in the year I did a sort of speed timed challenge where I made the Tilly and the Buttons cocoa top um, in a short amount of time and I, I shared that on a previous video if you wanted to check that out but this time it was a slightly different challenge uh, whereby I was paired up with another of the ladies from the Felicity Fabrics blogger group and that was um, Rebecca and she is so number 65 on Instagram and I'll put her handle across the bottom of the screen for you so you can go and follow her if you are on Instagram and our challenge was to um, come up with some form of applique detail on our make so there were no boundaries as to um, how much we were going to use or what we had to make we, we just sort of went off and decided what we wanted to do and we chose our fabrics obviously from Felicity Fabrics for this and I decided to make my very last summer make so this is probably a little bit seasonally inappropriate right now uh, because we have just had a weather change and it's definitely gone very autumnal now um, so I don't know if I'll be getting any more wear out of this unfortunately but I have worn it and I am so pleased with my make. So what I've made is the Colette Patterns Hazel Dress. Now this is the pattern here, but Colette Patterns don't um, produce patterns anymore. So these are available on the Seamwork website. You don't have to be a member on there to purchase the patterns, but um, you can subscribe if you'd like to for a monthly fee um, to get access to all the patterns. And I think you, you accrue some kind of um, point system where you can get different downloads at different times of the month, that kind of thing. Um, but yes, I really like this, um, this dress and I've seen it before when it was actually in the shops when Colette was still trading. And it's basically a fit fitted bodice with a, a gathered skirt, which is, you know, my, my style, my signature style, I would say. I do like a fitted bodice and a flared skirt. Um, and it has a gathered skirt on this one, although it's not overly um, wide, so there's not loads of fabric to gather into the bottom of the bodice. But what I do like about this pattern, which you can't really see on here very well, is that it actually has a really nice bodice detail where it's actually panelled and then the centre section is in a V here. Um, and I just think that's a really nice style of bodice and it just means that you can sort of mess about with your fabrics a little bit. So before I go into any more detail about the pattern itself, I'll show you my dress. Now I haven't got it on now, I've got it on the hanger, but I will be putting it on. Um, so I made this out of a beautiful seersucker fabric um, and I've not used seersucker before, um, but it is basically a lightweight cotton fabric. And as you can see, I've decided to play around with the stripes and for the centre section, I've gone horizontally and then the rest were just basically vertically. But the way that the side bodice pieces are positioned on the fabric and you, you sew them in onto the V, it creates that chevron effect. And I think that's a really, really nice effect on the bodice. Um, these darts here, I initially thought that they were bust darts, but they're more shaping darts um, because they don't actually sit on your bust apex. Um, and I'll, sh I'll show you that when I'm actually wearing it. But yeah, it's, it's just a really pretty dress. And then it's got a lovely gathered skirt. And then it. it's got a facing as well, which isn't my most favourite thing to do. Um, I was going to actually fully line this, but due to time, I decided to just go ahead with the facing detail just because I um, was sort of running out of time for the deadline. I love the thick strap detail as well, but the way they are positioned, they don't actually cover my bra straps at the front. Um, on here they do at the back but not on the front I think it's because I always wear a balconette style bra so the the way the cups are um my straps are kind of right over here rather than up here um it could be that you can't wear a bra with straps with this I, I don't really know but just in my experience with the bras that I wear it doesn't cover the bra straps on the front so I do wear a strapless bra with this now, as you can see, you're thinking, where's the applique? <laughs> so it was uh, quite the evolving dress, I have to say, because I really struggled to decide what I wanted to do on it. So I had a vision initially that I wanted to put some applique on the um, bodice and I was trying to combine my love of 
free motion machine embroidery with applique to do my design. And in my head, I was kind of um, envisioning having some form of butterfly or bees on there and sort of flying around, <laughs> that kind of thing. And I did a trial go on some of the seersucker fabric and unfortunately free motion machine embroidery just wasn't happening on this type of fabric. It's just too lightweight. So I would have had to have stabilized it. And I didn't really want to do that on the bodice because I, I think you would have seen it. And um, yeah, I just struggled with it on my machine. So I decided not to do that in the end. So therefore I was coming up with some other ideas of how I could put the applique detail on it. Um, and I also didn't really want to take away too much from the lovely chevron effect on the bodice as well. So I was kind of changing my mind to embellish that at all. So what I decided to do was uh, initially to embellish the skirt somehow. And I was coming up with some various ideas. So I actually remembered that I'd got a pattern in my stash, which was actually, this is the pattern that my mother-in-law made for my niece, who's now 14. <laughs> and she was only a toddler at the time. And this is what? encouraged me to get into sewing because she was wearing this dress um not with these bows on but with the flowers flowers on uh which one is it up here um and so I thought oh maybe I could use the flower applique to put that on to my dress so I thought right I'll give that a go then and see how that looks and so I actually did um sort of some test ones so I was gifted this fabric as well from Felicity Fabrics to applique onto my dress um I keep flicking from applique and applique, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, yeah, so as you can see, it's quite a lightweight cotton because you can see the fabric behind it. But um, yeah, it uh, it was really nice contrasting colours, really. You know, for the um, for the this fabric, <laughs> and I did a heart as well, and I just um, did some sort of uh, stitching around the outside, which is uh, very much like blanket stitch, but it's actually on my machine already. It looks a little bit messy because I've cut around it because I kind of cut around it just to place it on my dress, just to give me an idea. Um, but I didn't really like how it looked, unfortunately. It just, I felt these were too big and the hearts were just a bit, I don't know, nothingy really. Um, so I thought, oh, maybe I could downsize this to place it maybe along the bottom like a border or that kind of thing. But I don't know, I just wasn't really feeling it. So when I was at my sewing social, I think it was last week, um, one of the ladies there said, well, why don't you put some pockets on the front of the dress and applique on there? So it doesn't look like, you know, you've just randomly placed the applique on and it's in a place purposefully. So I decided to go with that option. So um, I shall show you that the pockets don't come with the the dress pattern whatsoever so I just sort of drafted my own but yeah I've put some um <laughs> try and see how I can do this I might lower you down actually so I put some pockets on the front and just appliqued some hearts on that side and then on this side I have appliqued um a little flower and a little heart on there so I decided to do different on each pocket and I really like how that has turned out actually um, when I first placed the pockets on and then tried it on, it did look a little bit like I was wearing an apron. But then once I stitched them down properly and put the applique on, I was actually really pleased with how that looked. But Felicity Fabrics had kindly given me about a quarter of a metre of this fabric. And I thought, well, I've not really used very much. <laughs> so I thought, why not make some bias binding? And I have done so to um, hem the dress. And I do like to hem my dresses using bias binding especially because this dress turned out um, a little shorter than I'd usually wear. So I wanted to keep as much length as possible. So I really like how that looks and it just contrasts really nicely and just gives that little bit of weight to the bottom of the hem because this fabric is, is very obviously lightweight. Um, it's, it's opaque, it's not see-through at all, but um, it definitely needed that little bit of stability at the bottom. And then at the back of the dress, um, it is done up with an invisible zip. So that's the applique style that I went with, um, but I did use templates for those designs. And I've got a number of sewing books downstairs, um, and I know I've been promising you to go through my sort of sewing books, um, like to do reviews and that kind of thing. Well, these are the ones that I picked out of my stash to have a look in the back at what templates I could use. I had a lot of these, um, books before I did any garment sewing so near enough when I first started uh, my sewing journey and in the back of these so for instance 
um, you can see here, this is where I took the heart applique from there. Um, and there's all sorts of different templates in the back of these, um, which just gave me sort of ideas. And, th and this is Poppy, one of Poppy Treffery's books, and she is the free motion machine embroidery artist in Cornwall. Um, and she's got lots of different templates on the back of her book. Um, and so, yeah, that is, this is where I was kind of taking inspiration from, really. You know, as you can see, she'd popped a heart on there and then free motion machine embroidered it on, which I've, unfortunately I couldn't do. So I just used the um, applique stitch on my machine, which was, I think it was number 14 on my machine. Um, not that that's of any relevance to you whatsoever. And I had to just change the stitch width and stitch length appropriately for me to attach it on so that it wouldn't come off. And I did use heat and seal. Um, which is a sort of um, adhesive for putting material on material. And so you iron that on and you, you peel the backing paper off and then iron it onto the actual fabric and it puts it into place and then you can use the applique stitch over the top of it to secure it. And that also stops the edges from fraying when you use that heat and seal as well. If you were just to put the fabric on the fabric and then sew it on, wash after wash, it would end up fraying away, I think. So heat and seal does just sort of form that seal around the outside of it to prevent it from... Um, from fraying so I'll put the dress on then so you can have a look at it um but yeah I'm really pleased with how this turned out now I did have actually before I go <laughs> get changed um I did have quite the fit debacle with this one um so I made up actually I'll show you a quick twirl and I used some of the fabric that I was supposed to be using for project dresser girl but I decided that this was going to be too sheer to use so I thought right I'll use it and it's this fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics it's a little bit creased because this was my twirl one and it's just been sort of folded up on my table whilst I've been using it so I initially made up the size 12 and um, it was just way too big uh, around the whole of the bodice basically I had um, I haven't got the zip in it but I could hold quite a lot at the back and I thought that's just going to be way too much and I had it was just way too big over my bust area and when I sort of hold it up like this um yeah there was just way too much excess here and here basically so um I really did like the shape of the dress so I knew I was going to like it when I finished it but I decided to size down so I sized down then to the size 10 bodice and made a very quick twirl of that up um but it was still gapy across here so this was my twirl of the size 10 um i think it was anyway no actually this was after i'd altered um it so this is the size 10 bodice but what i actually did on my pattern piece for the triangle section is where you place this on the fold there i actually used my pattern piece and i actually folded over like a section about that wide it was about a centimeter and a half um and I took that off the sort of front of that triangle piece there. And then I had to true up down the bottom to en ensure that the bottom of the triangle was still at the same length um, as the rest of the bodice, because obviously folding it over, I, I would lose that, that height. Um, and so I made this up um, and that fitted much better across my, my bust area. Um, and the dart seemed to be sitting a lot better as well because they on the previous one it was they were really really pointy and I thought oh they they look really weird and because I did put straps on this one um I could see I mean I hadn't put the straps in the right place because I, I just popped them on but for instance when I had this on um yeah the the bust darts seemed to be I, I, well I, I thought they were bust darts um they seemed to be sitting like really high because my bust apex is here and they were going up here but then when I actually made the change to where I've got too much fabric in the center of the bodice it changed where those darts were and they do sit a lot better on me now so I will now I'm not going to waste this fabric I'm going to um take this apart and make it because um, I still have a little bit of this fabric left um, I'm actually going to make it into the official dress um, so yeah it's not going to go to waste that's for sure because I really do like that fabric it looks quite nice on but I had already cut out the size 12 skirt obviously from the first 12 so I decided to stick with that because I quite like the volume of the skirt because it didn't seem to have that much to gather in I thought I don't see the point in changing it to the size 10 skirt 
um, and so I just kept the size 12 skirt and gathered it in adequately along the bottom of the bodice. Right, so now I will go and get changed into the dress. Right, so I've got the dress on then, so let me pan you down a bit. So yeah, as you can see, I've taken my other bra off and I've just put a strapless one on, and so you can see that the straps are a little bit further in um, than perhaps a normal style dress. And then over the back, um, yeah, they fit really, really nicely along there. Um, and then I'll pan you down a bit more so you can actually see the bodice of the dress. So as you can see, they are still a bit pointy, but they're, they're the best they're going to be. But they are much better than what they were. So as you can see, they're sitting sort of shapely <laughs> over my um, over my boobs. <laughs> um, this, this dress does make me look very busty, I have to say. Um, let me see if I can lower you a little bit, actually. Sorry, bear with me. Just so you can see a bit better, hopefully. Uh, yeah that's a bit better so you can see the um the lovely v detail of this dress and then it's got panels so down here and then a panel here and then the back here as well so you can see that it's done up with an invisible zip and then the skirt is just gathered into the bottom of the bodice and then i'll stand back and you can see that this is the pockets on the front here and then it comes to just above my knees um, and that's with using the bias bound hem to keep as much length as possible. So all I did was overlock the bottom of the dress and then attached the bias binding and turned it up. So it's just literally the overlocking that's near enough just turned up. So yeah, I haven't lost too much of the length at all, but I just really like how this dress fits and feels now that I've made that adjustment because it was here that it was really, really gapy. It was just, I had too much there. So. I suppose if I folded it over by 1.5 centimetres, I've taken about three centimetres out of there in total down the front. And then I just had to make sure that that V uh, was long enough to, to join in with the rest of these panels here to go into the waistline adequately. But yeah, and it fits really nicely all around here as well. Um, yeah, so that's what the dress looks like. So I'm really pleased with it actually. Um, it's been one of those ones that I've been wanting to make for a long, long time. And I just decided now was the time to do it. As soon as I saw the seersucker fabric, I just knew that this bodice would work really well with it. And I think it's just really nice. And I love the little bit of applique on there. I was initially thinking, oh, am I going to make this dress look like I'm wearing a little girl's dress? Because actually when Thomas saw me wearing it, he said, oh, you look like you're wearing um, the school dresses, mummy. <laughs> I said I do don't I yeah and that was what I was worried about um but I think those pockets they they look absolutely fine and when it was a little bit cooler the other morning I wore it with my blackwood cardigan so I'm just going to grab that and then you can see what that looks like together so Thomas went and did the um the part run this Sunday and it was a little bit chilly at nine o'clock in the morning but it was a glorious day and yeah I wore my first ever blackwood cardigan that I made years ago this one comes out year after year absolutely love it but yeah this just pairs really nicely with it um and uh, that was just nice to wear on a, a chilly morning so you know i might get a little bit more wear out of it now that the autumn weather has come um around and i can just wear it with skin colored tights can't i really but also i could actually wear it with a little white um just a t-shirt underneath like a tight fitting t-shirt because i you know there's enough room i think to put at least a, a very thin sort of cotton jersey t-shirt underneath so potentially I could do that. So before I sign off I will just let you know the sizing that comes with this pattern. So it comes from sizes 0 through to 18 and that's a bust of 33 through to 46, a waist of 25 to 39 and hips of 35 to 50. I made, like I say, the size 10 bodice, but I changed the V very slightly. So that was probably more of an eight. And I kept with the size 12 skirt just because I wanted a little bit more volume around the skirt itself. Um, and I had, I think I had two meters of this fabric and that was way more than enough. Um, I've got a little bit left over actually. So yeah, that was, that was nice. And there's, it says there's versions one and two, but version two is basically the same, but it just shows you how to use a border print fabric on there. Um, but yeah, the sewing up of it is exactly the same. Um, yeah, so that is the pattern and it just comes with illustrations inside. So there's no photos or anything like that, but their um, instructions are really, really good. There's always some tips on there. And I think there are some links as well uh, where they do 
whether this is still the case but for instance invisible zips they've got a link to, for you to click on where it will take you to an invisible zip tutorial on their um on their website but i don't know if that would still work because that is collectpatterns.com so i don't know i haven't clicked on it <laughs> i don't know um but like i say this was off the seam work website so that's my review for the Colette Hazel. I hope you like my dress. Um, let me know what you think in the comments section below and I will link everything in the description box below for you as well. So there is a blog post to coincide with this video. So I will link that as well in case you want to have a look um, as I did take some photos in the garden. I will be uploading those onto my Instagram as well. So thank you very much for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give me that all important like and subscribe if you've not already done so. That would be lovely and I shall see you again soon. Take care. Bye.